Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Living Lambo 3D printing video. Today we're going to be making Daredevil's cowl along with his billy clubs. So let's go. When I took the helmet off the bed, I did notice that some of the layers at the bottom of the helmet did not adhere to each other very well. So before we start the typical post-process work, we're going to have a little bit more work to do. We're going to use XTC 3D on the bottom of the helmet and it should act as a protective resin coating and once it's cured we should be able to sand it smooth. If you've never worked with XTC 3D before I'll be sure to add a link in the description below. I also wanted to point out this line that goes around the entire helmet. More on that a little bit later. The XTC 3D doesn't look any different once it's dry, but the tackiness of it does go away. So that's when you know you're good to move forward. The Billy Clubs also had a small issue as you can see with the line. The clubs printed all in one piece so they weren't very strong at the top and both of them ended up breaking. But I just glued both pieces back together with a little bit of Gorilla glue and E6000. I printed the billy clubs at the highest possible resolution so I really didn't have that much post-process work to do here so the sanding is a lot less involved than what you're about to see with the helmet. So moving back to the helmet we're going to go over all the areas where we applied the XTC 3D with 220 grit sandpaper and then the whole helmet will get a pass with 80 grit while paying attention to the details on the side of the helmet because we don't want to sand those away. With enough elbow grease, this 80 grit will also sand away that line that we talked about a little bit earlier. And the areas that we don't need to show as much love to are going to get hit with the palm sander. If you want a more in detail tutorial of my post process work, be sure to check out my how to sand, fill, and prime 3D prints video. The link's going to be in the description. Now just to make sure all those dang layer lines are gone, we're going to go over just about everything with this Bondo glazing and spot putty. You can be very liberal with this stuff because once it's dry it's all going to sand away pretty easily. I like to give the bondo about two hours to dry and then I go in with 220 grit sandpaper and sand it all away. Well not literally all the way, just until it's smooth. And the same process is followed with the billy clubs. So now that everything's all nice and smooth we should have a pretty easy time with priming, I like to use Rust-Oleum's 2-in-1 Filler and Sandable Primer. I usually like to do one light coat followed by two heavy wet coats. Give the primer like a day or two to dry and cure and then you can go in and sand again with 180 grit sandpaper. I'll be real with y'all here for a second. I did this helmet two months ago so you don't need to wet sand at this stage. I'm not really sure why I did but you don't have to. There were a few spots I could have sanded and bondoed a little bit better so I'm gonna kind of start from the beginning and follow all the steps again just in those small areas. Okay. 
And finally, this time I'm gonna have my last round of sanding, and this time will be a proper wet sand with 400 grit sandpaper. If you're at all familiar with my channel, you may know that I did two half-scale daredevil helmets a couple months ago, and I quickly learned that I am not a good hand painter, so everything's gonna get a black base coat. And if you're not familiar with my channel, you should definitely think about hitting that subscribe button. So now in preparation for the red, we're gonna mask off what needs to stay black. And let me just say, this was difficult. What I ended up settling on was taking the painter's tape and then using a pin to push the tape into the grooves where I needed it. And this also ended up creating a guide for me to cut along. I know this is a bit like watching paint dry, but this actually ended up working very, very well. So once I had everything taped off like I wanted it, it was finally time to lay down that all important daredevil red. I wasn't very happy with the red that I ended up going with on the half scale helmet. So this time around, I was very particular about the red I used. That time around, I had used this brick red by Rust-Oleum, but this time I'm gonna be using Claret Wine. and I hit it with two coats. I removed all the masking tape and the claret wine was a satin finish. So I went over the entire helmet with a matte clear coat. The paintings of the billy clubs all follow the exact same steps. Everything got a black base coat and then I masked off the areas I wanted to remain black and hit that with the claret wine. The only difference was the black sections of the billy clubs got a gloss clear coat and then I went in with silver rub and buff making sure to really buff it all in so I got a nice silver shine. Now the eyes, this is the reason this project sat incomplete for two months. I just couldn't decide what I wanted to do with these things. What I settled on were the trading card top loaders that if you collect cards like I do, you probably have a hundred of these things sitting around your house. And they're actually incredibly useful because of how thin and flimsy they are. So all I ended up doing was tracing the eyes and then cutting them out and using the Claret Wine spray paint to spray paint the eyes red. But I do want to find a better solution to making the eye. So all I did was use a little bit more of that painter's tape and I taped them in. And as you can see from the front, you can't even tell. I wanted to give the helmet a little bit of extra character. So I'm going to go around with this silver metallic marker and just add a little bit of battle damage to the helmet. And once that's complete, it's time for the final reveal. 